Hey everybody, thanks for watching this Premiere on Script video where we're going to build a function today that is fundamental to using scripts successfully in Premiere. Just to show you a bit of what we're going to do, it may sound simple, but what we have here is a script where it prompts me to enter a bin name, which let's say I'm looking for the audio bin, which you can see right over here, and I click, and it's going to change the name of each one of those files within the audio bin. Now this script may seem extremely simple, but if you think about what it's doing, it's targeting any bin that we want in the entire project, and it's allowing us to act upon the items within that bin. So you could do anything to these audio files. You could drag them into your sequence, you could export them, um, you could import stuff into a bin, the bin-based workflow is a really effective way, I've found, of getting things done within Premiere. So that's what we're going to build today. Now, in a movie a couple weeks ago, I talked about creating bins and creating sequences and moving them around a little bit. And you got some insight into how to access things within the project panel of Premiere. You now know that in order to access this first bin up here, you would have to go app.project.rootitem.children, and this would be children zero. Under that, this movie's bin would be um, another children zero, and then you'd have to find the index number of, you know, each one of these bins, and within that, navigate deeper and deeper, and that's just not something that we can afford to do in every script. We have projects that are constantly changing, bins are being moved around, assets are coming in and out, so we need to be able to, at any point in time, pick up and target a bin. So that's exactly what we're going to do, and if you come over to the sample code in the Premiere GitHub page you'll see a couple different ways of doing this one is called search for bin with name the other is search bin for project item by name both of these work they're just not the exact way that i like to go about doing this so i'm going to show you a different method that uh, i came up with and here's the script right now that i just ran that prompted us for a bin name and then changed all of those audio files to a different name i'm just going to back out of that so that those examples aren't there anymore and within this script, there's really two things. Down here is the bulk of the script. This is where I tell it to do what I want it to do. And up here is the function. And all this function right here does is you input a name to find, and it's going to return us back the index path to the bin that I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for the audio bin, it may return app.project.rootitem, children0, children0, uh, children 2, children 1, and give us that path, basically. But it can be a little tricky to write this, so let's look into what this function is just alone by itself. In this function, we're going to start with two arguments, the current item and the name to find. Now, the name to find is that prompt. It's asking us, what is the bin that we are looking for? And so right off the bat, inside of that, I throw out an if statement, of if name to find. Now this is basically just saying if the name to find exists, then continue on with the function. If not, just throw us an alert that says no bin was targeted, have the user try it again. Then this is where we really get into the code that is important. And I'm going to jump over here to this other version of this where it's kind of confusing a lot of text, but it explains what each one of these lines does. So this first for loop where I call variable j equal to zero and I take the current item dot children dot num items. Well, what is this current item? That can be kind of tricky and why is it in there? So if we go back to the original script, you'll see when I actually call this function. I say find bin index and I go app dot project dot root item. That is just to say that when I run this, I want it to start at the beginning and very root of the project. You could start this if you wanted to search within this first bin and you knew the index number of that bin, so right here this would be zero. I could start this at children zero. I'm not going to, but that's just an option that we have. And you'll see why in a minute why we have it that way. So it starts with this current item, which for right now you can assume that that is app.project.rootitem and asks us for the number of children. It then loops through those children and when it gets to each one, it sets the current child variable to current item dot children j. 
which is right here. And then it asks us if that current child, and then it asks us if that current child, that current item that we're on, is of project item type dot bin in all caps, that's important, and that name to uppercase, to uppercase is just so that we can not have to worry about capitalizations in the prompt, is equal to the name defined, then it's going to enter into this if statement and it's going to bind this global bind variable to the current child and then return the current child and end the function. So that's basically saying that if it loops down through this project and it comes across a bin that is named what you are looking for, it's going to return that information in these two statements. The next if statement is actually the part of the function that's going to allow us to loop deeper and deeper down into the file structure. It's going to say that, you know, if it is a file type bin, but it is not equal to the name that you're looking for, it's just any regular bin, then what it wants to do is it needs to run this function again. And this is called recursion. It means a function is like running within a function. It's like inception functions going on. But what it's doing is instead of starting with the current item up here being app.project.rootItem, it is going to start the function over again with the current child called as the current item, as the start place. That way it's going to go down and it's going to start at the project folder over here. It's going to dig down into the movies folder. Then in here it's going to dig down into these and it sees that there's these three items. Well, it gets to the first one and it says, well, that's a bin, but it's not named the bin that I want. I'm going to jump into it and see if that's in here. Then it'll loop through these. Oh, it's not there. It's going to go back to the original function and loop through the footage folder. Then it's going to check, see if this is a bin. Yeah, that's a bin. And it's also named the bin that I want. It's going to return that index path to us. So it can be kind of confusing with this whole function within the function thing. And sometimes recursion isn't what you want to do when you're writing code. I haven't run into any issues, and this is the best way that I find to do this. Again, if you need an explanation, you can just pause and read through this right here to kind of get some more information. So now let's jump back out to our original script. We have this find bin index function up here, and we've already discussed that, so I'm going to close that. And now we're going to get into where our our actual script begins. No pre-function building anymore. We're actually writing. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called global bind and set it to null. I'm going to make a variable, but I don't want it to be equal to anything. Then I'm going to create a variable, call it find me, and prompt the user, what bin would you like to find? And then the second argument is going to be just what comes up as a default in the little text box that you're going to enter. Now, once I have the find me variable, I'm going to run the function find bin index, as we discussed before, with app.project.rootItem and with the bin name that I would like to find. Now, you might be asking what this global bind variable is, uh, or you might have noticed it earlier. When we are inside the function, that global bind is what we are making equal to the current child when we find the bin that is the bin that we are looking for. But if I were to declare that variable within the function, it wouldn't exist outside of the function. I need to declare it out here, which is why I call it global bind, so that when that function runs, that variable is already in existence. Now, once I have that global bind variable set, it is set to the index that we want, we're going to run this next if statement. If global bind is not equal to null, saying that if I search for a, a bin and it doesn't find it, global bind is still going to be equal to null. So the rest of this script is only going to run if we indeed do find something in the find bin index function. If not, it's going to alert us no bin was found. But let's just assume it finds the audio bin like we did earlier. Then it's going to transfer the global bind variable to this target bin variable. And the only reason I do this is in case we get into doing deeper and deeper functions where I'm calling this function quite a bit, I always want to make sure that global bind is available to equal out to null and run this function again. I never want to be in a situation where I'm using this global bind variable for actual functionality 
in the code. So I transfer that over to the target bin variable. And now I'm going to do just a loop that's going to loop through that target bin. So target bin.children.num items. And for target bin.children I name, I'm going to set that equal to the same thing plus dash dash example. Just saying that once I have this bin index, I'm going to go through to all of its children and change the names. But you can think about what this gives us access to. Within this block of code right here, you could really put anything. You could put any actions that you want to perform on every single one of those items. What you could also do is include if statements to find only certain items within that bin that you need. So really this opens up the possibilities of what we can do with our scripts. And so I highly recommend getting very comfortable with this bin-based workflow approach and finding the bins that you need to target. And in the future, I'm going to talk about a lot of different ways you can use this technique to get things done in Premiere.